Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Rudy from Alpha Investments and I did want to make this video because I wanted to clarify what my opinions of him are. It has changed since he started and I'm sure the opinions of himself have changed since he started as well. And he shows what MTG Finance actually is, which is good. So MTG Finance community does not like him very much. They dislike him as much as they dislike me, perhaps more because he's bigger. And they dislike him because he's doing something they cannot do. And that is the compelling point I have. I just saw a recent video where he said that the about paywalls, right? All these uh, expert advice from experts about paywalls. And you can only read the article if you paid a certain monthly fee. Obviously, you guys know who I'm talking about and what websites I'm talking about. So it is quite interesting. And this discussion was because he spiked or potentially spiked a card called Bazaar of Baghdad, which is only really meant for vintage play. It is very good. I mean, vintage play, yeah, Bizarre Baghdad, that is very good, but I guess it could also be in like some type of dredge, right? For a fun type of dredge deck, maybe in a EDH deck. It is on a reserve list. Rudy owns a lot of them, a lot of graded versions. He gives 25, four hours, 24 hours notice that the price would go up. It did go up. That is a interesting experiment to me. I'm glad he did it. I have no interest in this card. The card used to be about mm, less than ten thousand, ten thousand, less than a thousand dollars, and now it is around almost let's say let's call it two thousand dollars. So it doubled in price based on his video. I always felt that is what should have happened. So when Tolari makes a video saying that Ultra Pro blank 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 is amazing. What do you think happens to Ultra Pro? The Ultra Pro doesn't go up in price, right? Because they have lots of supply, but people are going to buy the Ultra Pro. It would be dishonest for us to assume that the Commander cast and all these people being sponsored by all these other people, the other people are not in it for marketing. What I love about Rudy is he's in it for himself. So he's not sponsored by Ultra Pro. He's not sponsored by... Um, people who make deck boxes or any of those people. TCG player, Card Kingdom. So when Tolarian or Wedge or Commander podcast or Magic the Amateur, when they promote something, it's because they are getting paid to promote it and they want you to buy it. It would be dishonest for us to think otherwise, right? But of course, it doesn't say sponsored video, right? You because the whole video has, like, every video has it, right? So you couldn't be like, oh, sponsored video in the headline because then every one of your videos would be sponsored. But Rudy has sponsored himself, and that's what I love about this model. He's pissed off a lot of people, and good, good, because those are, those are just antelopes, pretty much. Little antelopes that are upset that they themselves couldn't buy Bazaar of Baghdad and spike the price, that they don't have the reach Rudy does. And I'm glad, I am glad he's doing it and I'm glad that he's doing it without sponsorships because this is what everyone else is doing. I mean, how can you guys not see it, right? Everyone is in YouTube for themselves. Now, some people subtly, you know, say it. Some people ask for donations, some people cry for donations. There's a lot of things people are doing, but the end of the day is they want you to buy their product. They want you to buy Ultra Pro, Pro sleeves. They want you to buy this wood deck box that's like $200. They want you to buy stuff. They're trying to sell you stuff. I mean, Rudy's trying to sell you stuff too, but at least he's honest about it. And that's what upsets MTG Finance. You know, when people try to sell like subscriptions for this elite forum, and they're trying to sell their articles because it's so valuable and they're promoting their Patreon every single minute of a podcast. At least Rudy is honest. Because at the end of the day, everything is a business. And I'd rather have us in the playing field where we can be honest with each other instead of hiding and, oh, you know, I just 
Card Kingdom is the best. It's the greatest. They sponsored this video. If you want to support me, support them. TCG players, the same, the same, the same. And it is quite fascinating to see someone with no strings attached to him just go on a rampage on the community. I'm glad because the community doesn't hate... Well, the MTG Finance community is not so uh, focused on hating me as much anymore because I'm not relevant. And that's good. I actually would prefer to kind of sneak out of MTG Finance. Maybe move on to a drama channel. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? Drama or finance? Maybe I'll do finance next week. But it is interesting. So my belief is MTG Finance hates him because they, they didn't buy the card. If they had bought the card, why would they hate him? The card that's worth $1,000 is now worth 2000 They would love him. But they didn't buy the card, so now they're complaining and whining that they can't afford a card when in fact they had 15 years to buy the same card. They just didn't buy it. And secondly, the whole idea of sponsorships, Rudy throws out the door because he is his own sponsor. He has his own business, and that is a lot more honest, in my opinion, because at least he'll back up his own product. He'll back up his prices. Do I agree with his prices? No. I think you mentioned Journey for Nix is $79.99. That's too much, Rudy. I know you know that's too much. David Adams has it for $74.99 with free items with another 5% discount with another $20 coupon. So I don't agree with everything Rudy is saying, but I love the concept that he's promoting himself because that will shed light on everyone else promoting other products, which they subtly promote instead of openly saying that this is what I'm being paid. Like we don't know how much people are being paid by Card Kingdom or TCG Player or Pico Trade. we kind of know, but other vendors, we don't know how much Ultra Pro is paying someone and maybe we shouldn't. But unless, at least we know Rudy is paying himself, right? Whenever he sells a box, he gets a little bit of money. And he's open with how much he's buying the box at and how much he's selling the box at. So from simple math, we can figure out how much he's making. And that's honest. I don't like it when you don't know how much Ultra Pro is paying you, how much TCG Player is paying you, how much Card Kingdom is paying you, how much this finance website is paying you. I feel like that's not honest uh, behavior uh, because yes, sponsorships, yes, inf I know this market very well because I pay certain models to promote certain brands that I do as a day job and they don't say how much money they get paid, right? I mean, no one does. That's why Rudy is so different because no one expects anyone to say it until Rudy comes along. So yeah, that's my opinion of him. I like him. I like him a lot. He's uh, the wolf of uh, MTG Finance. And I'm glad to have another uh, a beast, if you will, take all the, you know, the heat and the drama and stuff and open people's eyes to what MTG Finance actually is. It's not what you think it is. Because if it actually was, then these people, the only people making money from MTG Finance are the people writing the articles. I've said that a million times. No one believes me. Well, I mean, it's the only guaranteed money. Every other card can go up and down. You might believe a card is amazing and gets reprinted in the next set. Well, you might believe Seance is the next amazing card. Throw like $3 million of Bitcoins at it. See what happens. Nothing in MTG Finance is guaranteed except for paid articles. That's and paid subscriptions. That's an interesting concept. I'm glad that Rudy is Rudy and that he's bringing it into the light. Bye, guys.